Hello, my name is Melissa Miller. I'm a pastor of a congregation in Kitchener-Waterloo, Ontario, a part of Mennonite Church Canada. I am delighted to be the pastor of a congregation that loves Jesus and loves each other. I am also a person who loves the Bible, and I love to have faith conversations. Um, and that often happens in Sunday school classes, such as the one that you're preparing for as this leader. I'd like to thank you for taking on the leadership of the class, and um, that includes the preparation as you uh, watch this video. It is no small task to undertake Unit 3 and the four lessons. It has a cozy title, Neighborly Conversations, which suggests a couple people you know, poking around the back fence or something like that. However, this material quickly plunges us into complex and difficult conversations. Conversations we might be having or avoiding having with our neighbors, with the people in our churches, with the people in our families. Conversations about race and racism, about justice and injustice, about cross-cultural differences and tensions, about judgments of superiority and inferiority. As Leo Hartshorn tells us in the opening to this material, reading the Bible is a political act. And so these neighbor neighborly conversations take us in a political direction. Thanks be to God, even with these difficulties, this hardship, we are held by the biblical text. We are held together by Jesus' model of reconciliation. And we are held by the God who does not abandon us. So as a leader, as you approach these neighborly conversations, I encourage you to proceed carefully and prayerfully, to proceed with sensitivity and your own vulnerability and to proceed with courage and trust, and to trust God's leading and to trust the excellent materials. As we move into Unit 10 and read The Room, this unit leads us into historical abuses that have been associated with the Church of Christ, abuses for which there is great harm, great sorrow, great violence that has been done. Abuses that include slavery and colonization and land theft. And we're encouraged to read the room, the title of this, the title of this unit. So I encourage you to read the room both in terms of your own room, the room of your heart, uh, to read the room of the students who are going to be joining you in the room, to read the room of your congregation and and to read the room of the neighborhoods in which you live. Page 60 gives us a definition of evangelism, asking us to think through, what do I really mean when I want to share the good news? What am I trying to do? Um, and so these open-ended sentences are a good way to help the group think through um, the Christian task of sharing the good news of Jesus and also doing that in a context of sensitivity, and vulnerability. On page 61, we have some questions about um, positions of power and how I, uh, when I'm in a position of power, how do I listen to others? When I'm uh, in the less powerful position, how do I raise my voice? Am I listening to change myself or am I only trying to change the other people with whom I'm in conversation? So I think there's excellent material to lean into. I also would encourage you to have the concept of lament as you come to this lesson. Um, depending on our life experiences, depending on our skin color, depending on our family's place in society and culture, we come to these matters with sensitivity, with wounds, with defensiveness. And so there's reason to lament and I encourage you to make space for that in this lesson. I also encourage you to pray together at the end of the class so that you take what has been said and heard and felt and wrap that up and give it back into God's gracious keeping. I offer a blessing for you as you lead this material. 
I ask that you may have a heart that expands to take in the harms and the abuses that have been done in the name of Christ. I ask you to lead with a soft and open heart and a willingness to face hard truths. God will bless you as you do. Amen.